as well. But uh, it's, it's really up to you. But in this case here, we're going to be starting with the, the HMI portion of the programming for our timers. So we'll go over here to the left. And the, the first variable that we're going to look at is the, the button. It's under the Shapes menu. You can see on the center pane here. And then just the, the square B. So when you click that button once, you click it a single time, and then you hover over to the HMI. And you'll see now, instead of the standard cursor, we have a crosshair, which allows us to, to draw out the button that we want to be able to use. So I'm just going to click and hold down and drag the button out. And you see that now we have a properties menu. Um, so there's a bunch of different options you can define in here. Really, the main ones that you're going to be using are the under the text option here, button. I'll move this down so you can see. But when you type in the text here, I'm just going to call it on 1. You can see it changes on the HMI here as well. You can click the checkbox, which will allow you to, to apply that change. So my text is on 1 for the button. Um, we have the option to have text from the string library as well. Uh, we're not going to go into that today. The string library is a whole other topic in itself, which we'll look at at a later point. Um, the standard options as far as selecting the fonts, and also as well the, the appearance of so the background color of the button. You have the nine options here. Also the text color, the foreground, and then the style, whether you want it to be, to be pressed or flat. Um, those are really just more cosmetic options that you can define. The other important property that we want to assign here is the touch property. So by default, it will just be on mouse click, which really doesn't do a whole lot if you just have it on the HMI screen. Uh, so we're going to want to assign a touch property here. So you just click anywhere in this, this area here where it says mouse click. And we have the option to select an operand and address. Uh, so this is a push button that we're defining. So it's a Boolean value, which is going to be working with our memory bit here. Um, if you click the, the little blue text down here, and when I hover over it, you can see it says get next unused address. This button is very handy. It allows you, in our program here, it's a simple program, so it's not, not so critical. But once your program is more involved, what this button does, it finds the next unavailable used memory bit or integer, whatever, whatever operand type that you're using, really. Uh, but when you click this blue button, it finds the next unused one. So it makes it, it, makes it easier when you're assigning buttons uh, to make sure you don't accidentally override one that you've used already. Uh, so when I click this here, it's MB0. We haven't used any memory bits in our program yet. So the first unavailable one that we can use is memory, memory bit number 0. Uh, so when, when you click that button, it assigns us to memory bit 0. You also have the option of punching in whatever number you want here manually as well. I'll put it back to MB0. And the other parameter we have here is the operand description. And this is also, it's not mandatory, it's not required, but it's, it's strongly suggested that you insert a operand description here. Think of it, think of it as a label. Um, it allows you to, to keep better track in your programming to make sure that that you know what operands are used for what. Again, in the simple program here, it's not so critical. But once your program is more involved, uh, knowing which bit is linked to which will help greatly, whether you're debugging or designing HMI screens, ladder code. Uh, it's really just a good idea to give a label here. So I'm going to also call this memory bit here on button 1. And last option you can see here as well is the power-up condition. Uh, it's next to this little power-up plug here. The two options for the Boolean value, or the three options, I guess, really are none, reset, or set. When you have it to none, uh, it, it just does not use the power-up condition at all. But what the power-up condition is, when you reset power to the controller, you cycle power, or you initialize and reset, any options like that, if you have a power-up condition selected, it will automatically store a reset or a set to this Boolean value. So if we cycle power and we have reset selected, when we turn the controller back on, the state of MB0 will be 0. If we have it to set, when we turn it on and reset the controller, it will be a, a high state. Um, so with a Boolean, you just really have the on or off selectable. But when you're using a memory integer, for example, or any type of numeric variable, 
it's it's useful as well if you want to have a preset value in there. You can store 123 into MI0, for example. So it just allows you to have a kind of a default value and whenever you cycle power. But in this case here, we're going to leave it on none. I'm going to hit OK. So now we've defined our text, called it on1, assigned a link property of MB0. That's all that we really need to, to do into here. I could talk real quick about the other parameters under here, hide, disable, marking view. Uh, whenever you click these where it says mouse click right now, it's just going to ask you to, to assign a, another memory bit, a Boolean value there, which will, if it's high, you know, it will hide the variable, disable mode. It will make it so that it's grayed out so you can't actually select it. And marking view is just when it has a, like a highlighting background behind it as well. So those are more advanced parameters. If you want to hide certain portions of your program, you can link it to, to a password, for example, which we'll look at at a later point as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll go into those more later in our webinar series. But for right now, we can just X out of here, and our parameters will be saved for on button one. So we made this on button. What we're going to do with the button, basically, is we're going to turn the timer on, allow it to count down, and then we're going to turn on the light when, when that timer is being has become active when it's when it's finished counting down. So we have the button to press to hold down to turn on the timer, but we want to have some sort of indication for for the timer having expired and having you know set the timer bit. So if you if you watched our first webinar, it's going to be the same sort of thing that we did with the push buttons and the different types of logic. So what we're going to use here under the the image pane you'll see the option that looks like the the little yellow eyeball. It's a binary image or switch so I'm going ahead, gonna go ahead and click this button here. Same thing as the button you click it once, you hover over onto the HMI screen, and you'll get the crosshairs. So I'm going to hold down and draw out with the crosshairs. And now I have the, the window open for the binary image. This, this variable allows you to have two different states graphically represented. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to link. So we're going to link it to a Boolean value. I'm going to use the next available here, like we talked about just before. I'm going to call it light output 1. So we have this Boolean value, our memory bit 1. You can see here there's a 0 for the off state image for 0 and a 1 for the on state. So depending on high or low status of this memory bit, we're going to display a different picture. So I'm going to go and hit browse. And let me just say real quick, the default directory, it should open to the images for you automatically in BusyLogic, but if for some reason it does not, it's going to be located. My drive is the E drive where all my, my programs are installed, but most people will be the C drive. Uh, but it's going to be in your program files, Unitronics, BusyLogic underscore C, data, and then images C. So that's, that's the folder where I am right now. This is the, the library of images that's installed by default. When you install VisiLogic, you have these, these different images to be able to utilize in your program. And you can also import custom images as well. But there's a nice library that's included with VisiLogic in this images underscore C folder. So we're going to scroll down here. You can use whatever image you like. I'm just going to use the LEDs window. And for my off state, I'm going to pick the red LED. And for the same thing now, we want to define an image for the, the high state. So I click Browse again. It remembers the last folder that I was in, which is nice. I'm going to click the green button, open that up. So now I've defined a, an image graphical representation for my off, my zero state. You can see it says zero in here. And then I have a picture also for my one state. And one thing, a quick note to say as well, you can see right now it's displaying the green on here. If I click red, it's going to display it on the HMI. It really, on, when you're programming in here, it's just going to show the last state that you had clicked for this, for this check button. This really has no bearing on the actual program once it's been downloaded to the controller. But uh, some people ask why, you know, why is mine red and the other person's is green on the HMI. It's really just the result of the last, the last radio button that has been clicked before you hit OK. Um, so we define the memory bit, the link portion for our graphical representation here. 
And uh, I'll talk real quick about the toggle button as well. The toggle button, if you have this checkbox selected, this is basically going to control the state of the, the memory bit that we've assigned as the link without any ladder codes. So if you have the toggle button checked here, whenever you use the HMI screen to physically touch this, this graphical variable, it's going to automatically toggle the status of memory bit one from low to high or high to low, you know, which, whichever the previous state was, it's going to toggle that. Um, so if you leave this unchecked, which we're going to do, it's dependent on some other condition within the ladder code. But if you want to avoid some ladder programming and the situation fits, you can have the checkbox selected for a toggle. But in our case here, we're not going to be using that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. So right now we have our on button. We have a representation for our light, which we're going to add in the ladder code in a minute. Uh, but one other thing we want to place on the, the HMI screen here is a special type of, of variable that's dedicated to the timers. So in our center pane here again, if we go down to the, the menu for timer encounter, that, that header here, you'll see there's the option for a timer, which just looks like the black square wave there. Uh, if you have a smaller smaller resolution on your monitor, you may have to click a, a drop-down box to get these additional tools. My resolution is large enough where I can display the entire menu here, but some, some people's monitors may cut it off like around the graphs, for example, and you'll see there'll be a little checkbox here where you can open up and select the, the more variables. Uh, but mine's available here, so I'm just going to click timer. Same practice, click it once, draw over and hover. I have the crosshairs. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it out. And now you can see there's the special type of variable timer. Um, so what this allows you to do, it allows you to link directly to one of the pre-programmed timers, and we can display that on the HMI screen. You can also input the value as well. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing you should always do whenever you open up any type of variable window is really to assign a link to it. So I'm going to click the Browse button for the link down here. Again, I'll just use the next available. We haven't used any yet, so that's timer zero. And I'll give it a label as well. Call it five sec timer. And you can see now when I have the other option down here for timer type. So when I drop down here, you'll see I have the option of TD, TA, or TE. And those stand for timer delay, timer accumulated, and timer elapsed. Um, so we have these three different types of variable, variable timers to work with. Uh, I'll say real quick, there is, there is a section of the help file. I'll open that up real quick to you. You can see here, it explains well the different types of timers. So when you click the, the blue button here as well, you see there's a, a nice little graph here which shows the different the different conditions and the result as far as the, the TD, time delay, the TA, timer accumulated, and the, the TE. I think I said timer elapsed before, but it is timer extended pulse is the correct terminology for the TE. Um, so it, it explains well if you want to read these different types. I can say real quick just to summarize the TD timer. Basically, it'll always reset back to the preset time, uh, and there's no manual reset required. So when it counts down, it's just going to hop back up to the next, the next preset time automatically, and you don't have to manually reset it. The TA timer, this one will pick back up from the previous current value. So if you stop sending a condition of power flow to the timer, if you break that in the middle of the countdown, it's going to automatically pick back up from the, the previous current value and continue to count down from that previous value. But it does require a reset with a, a reset coil when you are programming that into your logic. And the TE timer, that only requires a single pulse to turn on. The other two types of timers require a constant pulse, um, uh, constant contact flowing with power to it to be able to energize the timer. The TE only requires a single pulse to run. And this one is unique as well in that the bit is on during the run. Uh, the other two are opposite in that regard. But if you read through these descriptions in the help file here, and as well as uh, just take a look and follow these graphs here, it, it helps you understand pretty well the different types of timers. But I'll just say the most common one that you're going to be using most of the time is probably just a TD timer. And that's all we're going to stick with today for the, for the example as well.
So I should just say too, I pulled that up. If you click the search button and search for timers, uh, it will be the second one you have down here as well in the help file. So I just typed in timers before, so I had it open already, but you click in timers and you